Hey there, romance readers and kinky friends. We would love to keep the discussion popping on Instagram. Head over to romance at glance to play with us and recommend our next book. Romance at a glance. Uh huh. Romance at a glance. What you say? Romance at a glance. Go ahead, girl. It's Well, hello there, dear listeners, and welcome back to another episode of Romance at a Glance. I'm Bridget, and with my co-host, Shawnee. Hi, Shawnee. Hi, Bridget. How you doing, Bridget? Oh, it's so great to see you. You too, Bridget. And to be here talking about this book. I have to admit, uh, we actually read this book quite recently, Mm because we uh, read it over the weekend, and I am very glad that we're recording today and not later in the week like normal, because I wanted to talk about it. Me too. (laughs) Uh, So this is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. Um, And I have a fun fact to tell you, because normally I always read the books physically, Mm -hmm. either on a Kindle or from the library, or I buy them. Did you get an audiobook? This time I read it, and then I also had requested the audiobook from the library in case it would come before and I didn't have time to read the book. And I listened to half of the book. How did you like it? Um, just the, just the listening to the book. So I don't hate it, but it's very hard for me to appreciate the story and just get, kind of get lost in it the way I would reading, partially because I read quite fast. And so it feels like it's taking forever. So I increase the speed a little bit. Um, but I can only go to 1.2 because 1.4, she sounded like she was talking <laughs> like a crazy person. One was so slow, I was like, we'll never get there. So I was like, 1.2 felt okay. And then when we got to the scene where the the narrator was uh, being his mom, I was like, oh, you sweet narrator. You didn't want to like have people calling you racist, so you didn't even try any sort of Asian accent, even though she's Vietnamese. Vietnamese, and the accent she used was kind of like an old lady I don't know. It's just like a very weird accent. And I was like, I mean, not that I'm for like racial, racial stereotypes, but you could have just listened to what a Vietnamese older lady sounds like. And then. And then try. Yeah. Cause you do. I mean, the narrators do English accents and Irish accents. And I don't know. It just felt very weird to me that she's like supposed to be from Vietnam, but, <laughs> but doesn't sound like it at all. Yeah. So that was a, we- a little weird for me. I don't know. I didn't. It's not something that will be. It will not become my go-to. That is for sure. It. Uh. I remember. I mean, I've been listening to audiobooks for over seven years now. When I first started, it was with like Harry Potter, mm-hmm. and I remember rewinding so many times because I just wasn't used to listening to a story, um, and then it was so slow on one speed. I was like, I read like ten times faster than this, uh, but you can only process audio so fast. Right. Also, so it was like it was like one point five at first. Now I listen to every audio book in two point five speed. What? Because my ears are trained for it, and my uh, and my partner calls it um, chipmunks. He's like, "Oh, are you listening to your chipmunks again?" <laughs> yeah, I can't. I didn't even go that high. I got to one point four, and I was like, "She sounds crazy." If, if when now though, it's ruined me for real life because when I'm having a conversation with somebody, I'm like, "Hurry up, suit, <laughs> spit it out already." <laughs> that must be why you like me because I talk so you fast. You talk so fast. It's so great. <laughs> I know, and you know, I did have the realization while I was listening, and I went to 1.4. I was like, that's too fast. And I was like, that's so silly that you're saying this since I talk so fast. But it was weird to listen to. But it, the the mom's accent definitely threw me for a loop. It was a tough like, – it was tough for me to get past it. <laughs> I did enjoy, um, like, you know, hearing the, like, sex described out loud. Like, I've always enjoyed that. Yeah. I used to read romance novels out loud while me and my sister drove across the country – and so I would read the book while she was driving and then vice versa. So, like, I'm all about the auditory experience of it. Um, but I definitely don't think it would become my go-to. Also, it took, I mean, just way longer. Because I only made it through half the book. And that probably took more time than it took me to just read the book the first time. Um, it's kind of funny because now it's like the reverse. Like I told you, I can't read a book uh-huh. now. Like trying to open a book and read words is like so difficult because yeah. I ha- haven't done it in so long. It's probably like the equivalent in reverse. Yeah. You're trying to listen to audio. You're like, I just, I just can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't do it. So, so you listen to obviously a lot more audiobooks than I do. How did you feel like this narrator was? Um, so I don't mind when the narrators don't do the accents and stuff if they can't nail it. Uh-huh. Um, and now I have a little bit more mercy for the narrator after having talked to the authors at the um, 
at the panel because even though I produce audiobooks, um, like I get to choose the books and I get to do all that kind of stuff. So I don't choose any books. One time I made the mistake of choosing a book that had a Creole accent. That was terrible. The most terrible, painstaking audio book that I ever narrated myself. Okay. Um, but they, the authors only get a choice of like three narrators and they just have to pick the best. So uh, I think it's better for the narrator to read, you know, the mom's part sh- kind of straight versus trying to do the accent if if they're going to yeah, not that, nail that's fair. the accent because I think that can go real wrong real fast. That's fair. That's <laughs> fair. I don't know. I just, I, she gave it that like old lady sort of like... Oh, Michael. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it, but I was like, what is happening? I, I did. I did. It It didn't paint the picture well for me. I did rewind it when. It did not paint the picture of what the mom was like yeah. at all. Yeah. I rewound it and had to really listen to more of the description mm-hmm. versus uh, like the accent putting me in the zone. I will say right. that that much. Um, but the narrator, I'm so used to narrators at this point. As long as you really don't fuck up, mm-hmm. I, like... I thought the rest, I mean, I thought she did him and her fine. I liked her, I liked her voice for the actual, uh, like stage direction narration portions mm-hmm. where people weren't talking. I thought she had a very nice voice. Um, it was just funny cause the whole mom <laughs> thing was hysterical. Um, all right. So good, good narrator all around. Yeah. I think a solid, solid narrator. Okay. That's what I call it. There's some that are like spectacular, like the narrator who did all the Harry Potters, um, Stephen Fry. Like for oh, me, I he's could just that being amazing. He's just butter on a piece of corn, sure. like you know. Yeah. And then there's just ones I think are solid. They didn't take away, but they also didn't make me go, "Who's this narrator?" Right. You know. I would actually listen to Harry Potter because I've read the books already mm-hmm. so many times that I feel like that would be like a really nice. Uh, uh, like I honestly, a fun journey, you know? I would recommend it because it's such a theatrical reading. Yeah. And he does such an amazing job yeah. of narrating those books yeah. that you feel like you get to rebuild the world all, all on your own. I do like listening to, um, and I promise we are going to get back to this book in one second, but I do like listening to people's autobiographies that they read. Oh, like Tina Fey? Like or, I listen or, to Tina Fey or, and Amy um, Poehler. Obama, I, uh, Michelle Obama. I didn't listen to hers, but yeah, things like that. Because if they're a, a, obviously like most of the ones I'm listening to are like the, they're comedians or they're actors, so they have quite a good uh, delivery. Yeah. Um, and I like Amy Poehler's. I remember especially she had such a fun, you know, just way of reading her own book that it really added to the flavor of it. Because now you don't have to imagine Amy Poehler saying it; she's just saying it to you, <laughs> you know, which I liked. I need uh, to read that one, by the way. I keep meaning to. It's quite good. You should read it. That's where it's where I I always steal my thing from. Where I say, not for me, no. but okay for you. <laughs> okay that, for that, that's, that was like her thing. She was like, I realized like that's not for me, but it's okay for you. <laughs> but in her her in her, her majesty, you know. Yeah. Um. All right. So let's get back to this book. Okay. Um. Aside from my my grace into Audioville. Um, mm. this book is not part of a series, but it is a modern romance, um, which I liked. I, you know, usually, you know, I like the paranormals and, and things like that, but I, I didn't mind at all that she, you know, had a modern job and they, they were communicating via text and things like that. Like that didn't bother me at all. No, it didn't bother me either. I, I thought they did a good job of, of interweaving sort of just regular sort of everyday things into This was the, the realest book I ever read. Right. The re- like the most like down to earth normal this might happen sort of in real life type of romance. Novel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even the fact that he was a male escort, I was like, yeah, you can find that on the internet. Yeah, like really easy. Especially if you have tons of money, you can find a really nice escort. You <laughs> like, know, I know two male escorts. I mean, I never use them; they're friends of mine. But they definitely were escorts. Yeah. At, at a certain point. I mean, it's a thing. It's a real thing. And I, I wish I had like the courage to actually use them. Like, oh, but all I can your do- own friends though. That no, 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 not oh. my friends. Oh, oh I was like, that would be weird. That's weird. <laughs> I'm gonna That's hire weird. you. Especially to come when, sex when it's like a brother to, to me. So yeah, like, and actually, like, he's not an escort anymore. But he like he like told me about it later on. He was like, so like back in the day, I used, and I was like, what? Wow. Tell me more. Yes. 
Tell me about all your clients. Tell me about it all. Yes. <laughs> you know me. I'm like, my motto is, tell me more. <laughs> yes. I want to, I would, I would not be able to rest without at least a few stories. A few stories. I'd be like, just give me some tidbits. Just give me some, <laughs> just like a little snack I can think about. Like, how did it happen? How did they find you? Where did you go? How did you meet? How did you, like, <laughs> like there's no end. What was the kinkiest thing somebody yeah. ever asked you to do? Yeah. What was it? How much did, did you, you do? How, how much did you charge? How much did you charge? Like, <laughs> did you have to upcharge when they asked for different things? Exactly. <laughs> Dude, that's actually a really good question though. Like on the spot, if they if you were already charging for this ABC, right, and they go there and you know they're like, oh, I really want to try this other thing. Do you go like, well, that's gonna be another five hundred? Yeah, I <laughs> like mean, right on the spot, or how, like, I mean, you must. You gotta like discuss it ahead of time. This is because you're not gonna like spring it on them. At, oh, by the way, that thing you wanted, that's gonna be an extra grand. And good. they're like, the fuck it is, I'm not paying you more. You didn't tell me. I don't know. I don't know. It's I don't know. But I thought I was I was totally into it. I was into the world. I was into the book, into the writing, into the modern romance. Um, and actually the cover art for me for this one, first of all, like I knew looking at it immediately it was going to be modern romance, mm-hmm. which I appreciated. Um, I thought the couple kissing was cute. I love the colors that they used. Um, but I actually thought that this book was going to be more like sort of romantic and sweet. Mm-hmm. But this book got down to the nitty gritty, you know, quickly and often and graphically. And it made sense. And it made sense. And I was about it. Yeah. And that I did not get from the cover. The cover looks very innocent and sweet. It does. And this book is not <laughs> very innocent and sweet. I I would completely agree with uh, your assessment of the cover. The only thing that cracked me up about the cover, and maybe other books do this too and I don't see it, is that there's like a little, uh, little red writing on the side that says a novel. So it says like the kiss quotient and very tiny it says a novel. And I'm like, as opposed to what? <laughs> like what do people look at this and think that it is? Okay. Like... <laughs> A historical tone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a novel. Well, thanks for that. <laughs> appreciate That's appreciate the info. I wonder if, well, but all books don't have novel on the front. So I don't know. Yeah. That's very interesting. It's a very interesting. We're going to, let's look, let's look that up. Let's yeah. get back to people on that. That would be, that's like an interesting tidbit. <laughs> whether they like choose that or whether that's yeah. like, they have to put it in. If they have to put it. Well, or would they have to put is it? Is it a new SEO thing? So now it gets tagged a with novel. a novel. You know, but when you search for the book, it doesn't come up Mm-mm. the kiss quotient, a novel. Yeah, so that's why I'm curious. I'm like, why did yeah. they, why did they put that? But I did like all the math. I love yes. how they're they're on a little division. Yep, I thought that was cute. I thought it was clever, and I I liked the little romance. And I agree with you. It looked super sweet. Yeah, but and I expected a very innocent romance, and then in chapter three, you were like, oh, oh what Stella. is happening? <laughs> All right, so let me give you a little synopsis just to catch you up on where we are in the book uh, in case you haven't read it recently or not at all. Stella Lane thinks math is the only thing that unites the universe. She comes up with algorithms to predict customer purchases, a job that has given her more money than she knows what to do with and way less experience in the dating department than an average 30-year-old. It doesn't help that Stella has Asperger's, and French kissing reminds her of a shark getting its teeth cleaned by pilot fish. Her conclusion? She needs a lot more practice with a professional, which is why she hires escort Michael Fan. The Vietnamese Swedish stunner can't afford to turn down Stella's offer and agrees to help her check off all the boxes on her lesson plan, from floor play to more than missionary position. Before long, Stella not only learns to appreciate his kisses, but to crave all the other things he's making her feel. Soon, their no-nonsense partnership starts making a strange kind of sense, and the pattern that emerges will convince Stella that love is the best kind of logic. Ooh. I know. I actually like it. Although, again, like, I mean, I guess they talk about foreplay to more than missionary, so they kind of tease that it's... That it's gonna be a little, little all the naughty. Book, yeah, but all the books tease like naughty. it's gonna be naughty, and then some of them aren't. After you're like, what? They yeah. gotta get you to read the book. So That's I never true. fully believe. Uh, and and then I think naughty is relative. Yeah. So it's like if you're Debbie McComber, then a little light petting is really. <laughs> <laughs> So really sending it's the kids really, into a dizzy. Exactly. <laughs> a little ankle. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I never you, I never trust that whoever wrote the synopsis has any sort of, you know, gauge on what's no. naughty. No, they're that, just trying right? to sell the book. They yeah. don't I probably haven't even read it, frankly. Exactly. Yeah. Is they're just a, spicing up whatever like summary the author has given them. Probably. There's probably like a professional like synopsis I think it's writer. A, I think no, it is a separate because the authors don't write their own synopses. So it's definitely a separate person who does that. Nice. Probably in marketing. Yeah, at the publishers. Yeah, like a copywriter or something. Yeah. 
Well, we've been, I mean, obviously teasing you, dear listeners, with with the, this book gets dirty, but it gets dirty in chapter three. And we're going to talk about a few of our favorite parts of the book, or just notable parts of the book. They don't have to be the favorites, I suppose. Um, but I definitely liked the first time that they met up, and they're, like, making out in the bathroom, and she's, like, so nervous, and he's, like, seducing her with the slow kisses and stuff, and she's, like talking to him in a way for her that is like very normal and straightforward yes. she's like i want your smell all over me and he's like who says you're not good at sex like you're doing <laughs> fine so far and she's like we're not even doing anything she's like i don't know what you're talking about and i thought uh, i just loved her character i thought she was so um and obviously this is a part of the autism and asperger's but i it was a very refreshing character for me because i've never read a character that came from that point of view um and certainly not in a romance novel. And so that was like super fun for me that she's like so innocent yeah. about her, what could be her appeal or what people would find attractive about her. And he's like, you're doing this talking part just right. And she's like, is there a talking part? I didn't know there was, and she gets all like nervous. <laughs> I didn't know there was a talking part. I thought that was great. I, I really enjoyed, so this character for me was great because um, there were two aspects of her specifically that um, I related to, which is not understanding sarcasm, um, just, that just completely going over the head and being completely literal in the way you speak, right? And so uh, I could totally understand so much of how she was communicating. You're like, oh, you want this? Okay, well, here's the answers to this. And he might be trying to be sexy or suave or whatever. And she, like when he made a joke about like, oh, you didn't write that down in your notes. And she's like, oh, yeah, okay, I got to write that down. She's like, good point. Yeah, Let good me point. Put it. I, that I totally forgot. And he's just like, what is <laughs> going on? <laughs> and, and those kind of moments happen for me all the time where somebody makes a complete joke. You know, they're they're like, oh, well, the airplanes just hop around. And, and I'm like, what do you mean? Like they, they, they can, they're like, no, no, it's a joke, Johnny. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> like this awkward <laughs> like moments or whatever. Um, and so I, I liked that she took a very analytical approach. I could really freaking relate, you know. Uh, I thought it was hysterical when she had She was like, okay, well, we did the kissing part. So we'll just take that off the list. Let's move on to the next the next one. As as opposed to like, you know, these all being a, a list of things that need to happen together. Every time. Every each time. time. Yeah. <laughs> each time. She's like, no, no, no. We've, he's like, you don't want to kiss me anymore? She's like, well, we, I think we've covered it. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I think even, I think everybody can relate to the idea of a pilot fish. Like uh, yeah. that description of someone trying to, <laughs> trying to clean your gums. Just getting in there. I mean, I don't care if you have Asperger's or not nobody really enjoys that at least not off the bat like it's a warm-up process to the pilot fish if that's your thing you know i've never seen anybody just really enjoy jumping right in just hopping in (laughs) hopping in the deep end the the deepest the deepest of the ends uh yes i especially love that you know the the juxtaposition of her being very analytical and him being like I've never been with someone who didn't want to kiss me again. Like, what? But I want to kiss her now. And wait, no, she's my client. No. I don't want to kiss her. I'll just do her list. But I do want to kiss her. But I do want to kiss her. (laughs) And like the next time they get together, um, you know, he's like trying to avoid kissing her, but keeps like kissing up towards her mouth. And then she just kisses him. And it's like, I'm sorry. I said there was no kissing, but I've been thinking about kissing you. And then like (laughs) hugs him. And he's like feels like all cherished and like loved by her even though he hasn't admitted that yet but it's i i liked the that he's like the professional you know what i mean but, yeah <laughs> but that she's like the one who's sort of seducing him with her her kindness and her you know even though she is very analytical she's also very caring and respectful yeah. and wants to make sure that he feels because she constantly is like most people probably aren't doing it on purpose but she's constantly having to um, like deal with other people encroaching on her space or touching her without asking or all these things that really affect her like physically and mentally. And so she's very aware of how she affects other people. And so, and like, he's obviously not used to that kind of, uh, I don't know. Attention. Just like (laughs) caring general goodness. I think, I think one thing that comes with, with being, um, and this is just what people have told me over time which is if you are a logical kind of analytical um straightforward uh communicator it comes off very genuine you're saying the things that you mean all the time and that resonates with people so you're either literally an asshole 
because you're like, no, I don't want to do that. Your breath smells, you know, which comes off like very assholery. But mm-hmm. legitimately, I don't want to do that because your breath smells. Mm-hmm. Like it's also people can respect it because you're honest, right. <laughs> you know. And I think for her, that um, that comes off very genuine. And so it just reads well. Like she's she's coming from a good place and you always know she's coming with the best part of her heart. And you can like really feel that. Also, I, th- I think the funny part for me was he was like, I'm a professional, whatever. Um, but then he sees her boobs and he's like, yo, she got porn star nipples. I know. <laughs> he had like, there were three moments when he said the porn star nipple thing, when he said that I want you to refer to it as as my cock, whatever you want it. And I was like, okay, well, that's weird. And then when he like forced her to like admit that he could call her vagina a pussy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, and I get that, like, part of it was, like, she actually, like, enjoyed sort of the thrill of it and whatever. That's just how he talks. But mm-hmm. those three times I was like, that is some silly ass shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that is, you're a fucking escort. Like, get classy. <laughs> you go, you you fuck all these ladies who are getting you a $1,000 a night hotel room. You're not fucking people, like, on street corners. you getting <laughs> porn star nipples. Porn star I've never nipples. even heard that before. You've never heard that before? The, well, so not. At, I mean, I guess it makes sense. Like someone whose nipples are like, like erect when they're turned on or cold yeah. or whatever. But no. So I remember seeing. I don't think this was on Oprah, but it was like a. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was Oprah. I don't. I don't remember which show it was, but it was it's a like Montel. <laughs> it was a show that had the kind of classy appeal as Oprah. It might have been like you know sixty minutes or something mm-hmm. like that. I don't remember. But they did this whole like study on women in Las Vegas, mm-hmm. right? So they sent women into, like, a casino to try to get them to, like, get free drinks or get free stuff from guys. Um, And they sent them in, like, regular, like, dress sexy, but just regular first. And then they had them put these little um, nipple things on their boobs to make nipples pop out of their clothes and send them back in. fake nipples. Fake nipples, basically. (laughs) And sent them back in or whatever. And it was all based on these women saying, like, oh, we take the bottle caps from shampoos and we put them in our dresses and we get more shit from guys because our nipples are out. And so that's why they actually did this like experiment. And it was like a huge difference that if your nipples were like showing through your clothes, the amount of stuff and free things that you got was like exorbitant. <laughs> I mean, I guess it makes <laughs> sense because it obviously draws the eye. It really does. I mean, I notice when people have erect nipples. I mean, mine are always out. They're always like, hey. <laughs> mine are never out. But I also have to wear, like, thick bras because I have such big boobs. So. Gotcha. Even if they were erect, you would never know. It's <laughs> behind some foam or whatever these bras are made of. Well, you have the cleavage for days. I do have cleavage for that, days. That brings them in. <laughs> brings them in. I will have cleavage. It's fair. Uh, yeah, I thought the, the porn star nipple comment was hysterical. Um, in general... Aside from those three moments where I was like, okay, that's silly. Uh, The sex in this book was as detailed as I wanted it to be. Oh, yeah. Which I appreciated. I'm like, don't, let's not just like fade to black. This isn't a movie. I want to know what is happening, whose hands are where, what is going on, who's orgasming when. Like and with what and with what and with (laughs) with what body part. And I did like that. like, even though she had her list and stuff and he was going a little off topic on sometimes, mm-hmm. I did appreciate that, like, every time she, like, locked up, he was like, okay, well, like, what happened? Like, let's talk about it. Yeah. You don't have to be embarrassed. Like, we can try again tomorrow. Like, it's not the end of the world. And he wasn't, like, like, at no point did he make her, like, feel bad about the way she was responding or that she should be different or that she should like something. Yeah. Um. You know, even when he's, like, going down on her, he's like, I really want to do this. And she's like, she's like, well, what if I don't like it like other people do? Will that hurt your feelings? And he's like, no, I'll <laughs> like it enough. It's fine. <laughs> um, which I, you know, again, I think is, uh, A, what everyone should do. I don't think that that should feel extraordinary. But it was obviously a juxtaposition between the other three people that she had had sex with. Yeah. And the Philip guy from her work who were not caring if she was enjoying it or – even remotely on the same page as them, they were just wanting to get their own rocks off. I feel like there's something just inherently sexy about uh, a partner who you know is has the ultimate goal of bringing you pleasure. Mm-hmm. You know, and then that that just that alone 
brings them pleasure. Now, mm-hmm. of course, you're going to do a, you know, whatever, but that's not the main goal. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't have that sense of obligation. Mm-hmm. And that I think the sense of obligation is what gets me. It's the turnoff for me. When things feel like it's like a like an an like, obligation to like you know, and you can't have that free communication and um and him stopping and being like, hey, okay, what happened? That sort of thing. Um, that kind of stuff lets you be free and fly in sex. And yeah, it might be a couple conversations that you have that may make you feel uncomfortable or you don't want to say things. And mm-hmm. we've all been there. Um, but when you do have those conversations. It makes like the later experiences really great because now you're not hitting triggers. You're not totally. hitting, you know, s- ridiculous little things that might just be like, I am subconscious about my elbows. They're a little ashy on a daily basis. Right. How about, you You know, don't kiss my elbows. I don't know, sure. whatever. Yeah. No, <laughs> that makes total sense. I mean, like, I, I do not have as much sensation in the old bosoms as a lot of people do. So I'm perfectly fine if you want to play with them, but I'm just certainly not going to have an orgasm with that. <laughs> you know? So I'm like, if you want to be a party to that, I mean, it's not like I don't enjoy being fondled, but I'm also not going to be like, that's Ooh. not the end of foreplay for me. Yeah. Where some women, it's like, you suck on one boob and they're like, I'm ready for the D. You know what I mean? I'm ready that's for me. something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like that. And so I had to tell, you know, tell people that I've been with, like, Again, like, if you're enjoying it and you're into it, like, I'm totally down. I just want you to know that this is not an apex for me. And, like, not because you're doing it wrong or something's going on. It's just, like, physically the nerves are all just not there. Or See, they're just different. And that's okay. I but think, these other things you could steer towards. And then that is how we will all. And I'm really curious because this is, like, a conversation I've never had with anyone really. Mm-hmm. Which is, like... It's very difficult for me to feel the penis fully inserted. Once it's fully inserted, it becomes just like whole numbed, like really? thing, whatever. It feels best when it's like knocking on heaven's door, you know. I do enjoy a tease when it's right. I just enjoy that, a you tease. know, like yep. the just the tip, just the tip. Yes, That's a lovely feeling. Where it's like stretch, no, stretch, no. Yeah. like that. Sweet. That'll get me going. And then maybe like the first like couple inches, there's like. Uh, some sort of ridge. I don't know what it is because I'm not super familiar with all of my anatomy and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I should be, but I'm not. Uh, whatever this like like ring of like muscle that has to expand mm-hmm. in your mm-hmm. vagina, like when it's stretching that and letting go and, and whatever. So it's that initial sure. like couple inches knocking. That's where it feels amazing. Once it goes all the all the way in, it no longer feels amazing. Even when me. it comes all the way out and then goes all the way back in? If it go, comes all the way out and goes back all the way back in, yes. But I also don't like when you beat my uterus down. Like, do you know what I'm talking about? Like, uh, <laughs> like when they're like, oh, yeah, I've got to go deep every time. And they're like smack in the back. Uh, like, yeah. that only feels good like every so often or whatever. But like as a constant thing, it feels like, oh, my God. My brain goes, this is going to really hurt later. Like, Interesting. You know, but I think that also might be because I have endometriosis. So, like, a whole lot of, sure. like, extra-ness Things makes it swell, right. you know, and that doesn't feel good. Um, but, yeah, it's always it's just that beginning part. So, guys always think they're racing home and doing good, but I'm like, it's actually all that beginning, like, right. tease mm-hmm. that actually gets me to orgasm right. versus everything else. So, like for me, I have to orgasm before sex. Otherwise, I like the sex is just like uh, I call I call it an, um, a lovely massage. So I think when like when you're talking about when you touch your boobs, so it's not sensitive. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's nice. It's, it's a nice. lovely massage. It's nice, but like it, it doesn't really do much for yeah. me. I think I think that's the most important thing to in general with communication is like. Every body is an individual body. There might be general things that are the same for women or men, but, like, every person is totally different. Um, <clears throat> I don't feel like – I mean, I love I love the, the knocking at the door, as you said. Love it. Uh, but I also love it. I love it all the way. Yeah. Up, all the way <laughs> all in, the way. all the way out, all the, all the things. Yeah, I'm all about it. And I never feel like I'm, like – I never feel like that where you're, you're, like, it's too far in or, like, yeah. oh, I'm going to be sore tomorrow in a bad way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, that's just yeah. like that's just my body yeah. versus your body, which is we're different bodies. I will say so. That's a uh, that's just like again, everyone, different. dear listeners. Yeah, talk to your partner. Actually, let him know. Let him know. Which I, I feel like, like I feel like Brendan's gonna listen to this and think I'm actually talking about him. I'm actually not. Um, uh, this might be FYI, but he has a ginormous penis. <laughs> He's literally the only penis that I've ever been with. Brendan edits our episodes. Everyone. So. <laughs> 
I'm like, shit, I better edit this one myself. But actually, he's the only person that I've ever been able to feel fully mm-hmm. inside. Everyone else, like, so I'm assuming it ha- there has. I'm a size queen at a certain point. Like, it has to be Could over be. a certain size for me not to feel like it's just like some in the middle dead eel. <laughs> Whatever. It's disgusting. <laughs> like it's weird. That makes but- me think of like when like the penis is not fully erect. <laughs> That's and it feels and you're like, what's happening in there? Like either after they've orgasmed, but they're still like thrusting a little, and you're like, mm, I don't know about that. Yeah. This is getting squishy in there. Like, but st- <laughs> even though he, even though he has a larger penis, though it just means I know it's there. But it's still not. But you still prefer the. But other I part. still prefer the other part. The other part is yeah. to me the. Whew, yeah. You know, or whatever. It might be where I have all my nerve endings. It probably and is. Whatnot, it probably you know? is. Yeah. So you're right. Like everybody's body is so specifically different. If you don't sure. have these conversations, you're just going to be having a lot of sex that you don't want to be having. Yeah. Or whatever, and that's the bummer. Yeah, you know what I was bummed out about in the book, um, and I honestly. I mean, I don't have autism or Asperger's, but I honestly hope that people who do read this book or give it to their teenagers, men and women who, because I, I think for me of her first three sexual encounters, the saddest thing was that she didn't know that that's what it, that it shouldn't feel like that. And she didn't realize like you can say no and that it's okay to say, "Mm, I'm not into this. And that she kind of, because she has to like, I don't know, suffer through is the way it comes to me in my mind, but because she has to like m- manage her own experience of the world all the time, that she kind of put that on her on sex as well and kind of was like, oh, well, this is just how it is. And if I want to be with someone, I just have to like accept this part of it and just sort of let it happen. And I honestly hope that this book becomes something that a lot of people read and realize no, you don't just have to let it, you know. <laughs> you don't just just lay there and and think of you England. can say well, you can say no, and you can say I don't. This doesn't feel right, yeah. and you can you can speak up for yourself, and and that has nothing to do with being autistic. That has everything to do with like, is this the right person? Is this the right time? Did something trigger you? Mm-hmm. Um, and and making sure that you're comfortable. So and and not only obviously for people who have Asperger's or autism. I mean, this is for everyone. Like, yeah. I hope you never go into a situation where you think, whatever, I'll just. He wants to, so I'll, or, you know, I'll just have sex and even if I don't enjoy it, but that's just kind of how it is. And I'm here to tell you that is not how it is. And this book, I think, does a great job of illustrating that when your mind and your body are on board, sex can be wonderful. Wonderful. If one or the other are not on board, then you need to wait until they're on board before (laughs) you have sex so that it can be wonderful or at least good. Maybe every time you're not like exploding the galaxy, yeah. But you should definitely be enjoying every time. That's what I think. I think you should enjoy it, even the lazy ones. Yeah. Or not. I thought it was kind of uh, sad, but it's not untrue. The way when when she hired him, she was really just learning how to please someone else. She wasn't actually learning. She was like, "How can I get good at this so that you'll that's, like it? A yeah, man that, will that like a it. man will like it. Not like I'll enjoy any of this. Exactly. Ever. You know what I mean." Even, like, I think what she was talking about, oral sex or whatever, it was, like, in her mind, like, a thing that she had to do yep. for, right. you know, like, like to check off the she box. She didn't have her oral sex on the box. She only had blowjobs. Yeah. You know, and I mm-hmm. think I think that was a, an important I, – I just – I thought it was sad, but I also thought it was important because I don't think it's a far-off notion that people have. I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. Everyone wants to, like – and I'm, like – and and I and I liked what he said in response was like you enjoying yourself and you orgasming is enjoyable for me. Like the foreplay is for you, but it's also for me. Yeah. Which I thought, you know, her again, like her little innocent show, really? Like, oh, I didn't know that. Like, but people, you know, should hopefully, hopefully read books like this one. Cause I do feel like this is in a more positive direction than books we read perhaps when we were you know, 15, like, you know, that were written 20 years ago or 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, because okay. I feel like they are more focused on both parties. Uh, yes. And consent. Consent. And the non-creepy. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. How creepy was Philip at her office? Oh, yeah. <laughs> First of all. He's like, you're a Ted for me now. 
was like, uh. First of all, like. You're not my tent. To show a coworker that you have a giant box of condoms is incredibly inappropriate, which is how we first meet him. And I was like, <laughs> this guy's the worst. And then he, like, comes in her office and asks her if she's a virgin. And I'm like, that is an HR violation, bro. <laughs> okay. And, like, especially if you literally think someone is a virgin. Like, that's not like, oh, we're all out at drinks and clearly this woman isn't a virgin because she's talked about past boyfriends or she had a husband or whatever. And I'm confident that she'll take this as a joke. And we're teasing. I'm like, it's still super inappropriate, but at least I'm like, okay, you're not trying to hurt her feelings. But you literally, he literally thinks she is a virgin. Yeah. And she's 30 and she's your coworker. And I'm like, not a props. So so I I read him wrong. I totally read him wrong initially. I had to rewind because the way he approached her, I was like, oh, that's our gay best friend. And then <laughs> I, was, and I, had, I was like, wait a minute. That's, I was like, I must have heard something wrong. I re- <laughs> rewound yeah. and I was like, wait, this is her coworker? Yeah. You know, like very, very, very inappropriate. Very inappropriate. Super inappropriate. And then, like, I feel like the interactions with him just got like worse and worse for me. Like when he chased her to the elevator. Yeah. And I was like, dude, that is the creepiest move. And, like, now you've trapped her in this elevator with you where you can interrogate her. (laughs) And now you're following her to her car, which she clearly doesn't want you to because she's three steps ahead of you and has already said bye, Philip, like four times. And then when he, like, kissed her and she had told him she was dating someone else. And I was like, you're a on your way to rape. Like, where are you going? This is obviously not. And and the part. The part where he was like, um, oh, we can be together because I, you have problems, I have problems. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, oh, what like the most non-romantic, mm-hmm. like, you know, like I can overlook your Asperger's. I mean, her mom I said that to her too. I know. <laughs> I know. It's, it was like super fucked up. I was like, I was like, you know, but her mom, your, her mom. Did it from it, a place of love. Yeah. But she also was like, the moms, moms say that shit. My mom says yeah. all that shit to me all the time. My mom literally two days ago, uh, I said, mom, um, I took a gorgeous picture, right? Of my show. And I, I sent it to her and I was like, mom, I looked and sang just like you. And I sent her the picture and she wrote me back and she's like, yeah, even with that butch and haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's a mom thing. And I was like, that's a mom, mom. thing to say. I was like, you're you so love sweet, me. mom. So you love sweet. me so sweet. I honestly, <laughs> so like now that I am a mom, I I know at some point I'll obviously say something stupid to my kid because it's unavoidable. You mm-hmm. have them for so long. You interact with them every day. Kira scratched my nose the other day and I was about to like throw her across the room. I was so mad. She didn't mean to scratch it, but she was trying to get me to let her get down and I was like, <laughs> you weren't moving fast enough. I was like, I'll kill you. Um, but I desperately hope that like with all of the like education and, and education, not just like traditional education, but also like going to courses and like learning about human interactions and soul searching myself and talking and doing things like this where I like to really dive in and hear how other, I really hope that I don't say anything to my daughter that, She's going to be like, oh, mom, you're the worst. Like, why why wouldn't you just say, yes, I liked your show? Wow, honey, I'm, yeah. like, your mom's response, like, so easily could have been, oh, my God, that's so great. I'm glad you performed. Yeah. End of the story. end. The <laughs> end. Or maybe tag on the yeah. haircut at the end yeah. of, like, a whole bunch of nice things. Not as, like, the, the first and foremost. Like, I really hope that that is not I me. mean, it was kind of like that where it was, like, the, it was, like, not a sandwich. It was, it was like. A compliment. Uh, it, was a, it was a compliment. And, and then that line. It was, mm-hmm. like, it was what she always says is, like, of course, because my mom is a diva. I mean, mm. like, a grade A legitimate diva, you know, yeah. like. Uh, vocally and everything. Yeah. And so, you know, she thinks everything is of course. It's like, yeah. if I sing and I do good, well, of course, well, you're of my course daughter. Of course, you're my daughter. You know what I mean? You're, of course, you're just like me. Of course, we're, you know, our birthdays are close together. We're both Leos. You know, so everything's, of course. You yeah. know, she thinks I'm legitimately her mini me. So a sure. reincarnation. So that was really the tone. I was like, look, mom, I like, look at you, whatever. She's like, of course, you're my daughter. Even with that haircut. Oh, <laughs> with my God. Even so with that crazy funny. hair. My dad hates my haircut, by the way. Does he? He hates it. I remember him just like when I got it initially, he just staring at me and he's like, uh, Shani Nani, <laughs> what, uh, what, what, what made you do that? <laughs> I was like, I like your haircut. I, was like, I, uh, I mean, I feel like you 
probably could get it shaved a little more often than you do. But oh, absolutely. <laughs> but, absolutely. I mean, I mean, but this is coming from me and my hair is, again, put I mean, up in pigtails because I, again, did not wash it last night because, again, I was too tired to wash it. I think you also know me and you know yeah. when it looks manicured and when, and when it looks like like I might be living hard. Yes. <laughs> and right now it looks like I'm living it hard. It looks like you're living hard. So does mine, though. I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow and I have to say that I am thrilled. It has been quite warm in Los Angeles for a pregnant lady. (laughs) And the hair has been on my neck and my shoulders and my back. And I'm going to get her to cut it so that it doesn't touch me. And then after that, I think I will be wearing it down more often. Yeah. Because right now, I'm like, I just can't. You look cute with the bob anyway. I like the bob. Thank you. I like the bob. Yeah. I like the bob. It's more like our little anime characters that you made us. I know. What are they called? Chibis? Chibis. Chibis. I think you. I'm excited about the new Chibis, too. Oh, yeah. Shawnee contacted our an- our animator illustrator. I guess she's an illustrator. Yeah. And uh, she's going to make us uh, some other versions of our little Chibis. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I think I have a Chibi exciting. addiction because we're going to have like 100 Chibis at the end I'm of all this. about it. I am ready. I want the ones in like the little historical dresses yes. and the ones in like... I don't even know what we do for like modern fantasy. Ooh. Fantasy. What do you want to be? A werewolf, a Valkyrie? What do you want to be? I don't know. Probably vampire. Probably a vampire. You know, I like vampires. You know, I'm about the werewolf. Yeah, it's not about the werewolves. <laughs> I like the werewolves too, but I don't know that I would look as cute as a werewolf as I would as a vampire. And also about the Philip thing. Okay. I just want to circle back really quick. So after he kisses her, which again, HR violation, do not kiss people who don't want to be kissed. This is a rule of thumb. Especially don't kiss people that you work with who don't want to be kissed. And you have some sort of position where you can make them uncomfortable or you can. Because I'm pretty sure it seemed like he was higher up in the company than her. Yeah. But not her direct hire, but like, you know. And it's just weird. It's just weird in general. Yeah. And please stop kissing people who don't want to be kissed. It's pretty obvious when they don't. And then she goes to see Michael right afterwards, and she, like, washes her mouth up with so- literal <laughs> soap, like, ten times. And he's, like, understandably upset on her behalf. Yeah. Um, which is the appropriate response. I would be very upset if I found out someone was kissing someone that I'm friends with or love who did not want to be kissed. And then it's so funny because he goes into, like, such a jealous rage, and he's like, I need to be inside you, like, right now. <laughs> which is hot. Which is hot. But also I'm like – so funny because at this point he's still trying to like pretend to himself that he's not like in love with her already and Mm -hmm. i'm like your actions are telling me that you are what did you think um about whether the book was like kinky vanilla Mm. like with i thought it was vanilla okay me too because i was like i was i i thought when he was an escort i was like okay well this might get kinkier this might get whatever but it was a pretty solid, like, vanilla. I think it was vanilla. It, it was, was good. very romantic. It was very romantic. Very and good. romantic. Very, um, very, like, sensual. Um, but definitely, I would say vanilla. Yeah. Okay. Because, like, the closest thing to kink that they got was the bathroom sex. And that was not kinky. It was just in a bathroom. In a bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was hot, but it was just in a bathroom. I, I, I actually really loved. Um, and I thought was the driving force for the sex for me was the the stages. Mm-hmm. I like that they built it like this class these classes that were happening. Mm-hmm. So it started off with kissing. It started off with foreplay. It started off with oral. It started it, mm-hmm. each each had its own little vignette moment, yeah. in moment mm-hmm. as it as it went on. And that for me satisfied almost like wanting to get to the nitty gritty, mm-hmm. but also building the anticipation for when it like actually did happen. It being mm-hmm. like yeah, I'm ready, you know, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. But I did find it very, very vanilla, but I did also love it. I loved it. I loved the sex. I thought the sex was written so well. Yeah. Except for, as we already mentioned, when he said... <laughs> <laughs> cock. Cock, pussy, and porn star nipples. And I was like, what? Yeah, I can get over <laughs> it. Um, I just, I mean, I thought she did such a good job of weaving, like, where they were having sex, too, was important. Mm-hmm. So, like... He actually lets her come to his apartment and no other person has ever come there. And they have sex, you know, in his bed, which is like changes things for him. And I also love, I mean, um, when she buys him underwear. Yeah. Because that's the sign of of when you You love someone someone and when they accept it. It's like she's like, if I buy him underwear and he wears them. It's such a it's it's, then by math and science. 
he loves me. Yeah. <laughs> Even though she understands that it's like a statistical thing, it's not yeah. a like a hundred percent. But I still thought that that was like the cutest. And she didn't even give it to him. She like left it in a little box in his underwear drawer. And I was like, oh my god, she's so cute. I was like, what are the odds that he's actually wearing this? At the end, she I was, was like, say hundred percent. When she was like, show me your underwear, because he was missing her. So of course he's gonna wear it. I guess for me, I was, I was like, what if they were dirty? That that's what I was thinking. I'm assuming like, she got him like a five pack though. I mean, she's rich, so yeah. if she didn't get him a five or ten pack. Yeah, she, then that's, she didn't get him one pair. That's cheap. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, she wanted uh, to buy him a damn car. Yes, at least get him yeah, ten a Tesla. She buys him a Tesla at the end. I yeah, she's like, I'm cash buying Tesla. You. I'm buying you a ninety thousand dollar car. Cash. So she can afford ten Hanes his ways. Yes, she can. You know. Um, speaking of <laughs> the ending, here was my thing. I do not love when. One of the characters, and in this case, it's the guy, mm-hmm. is, like, getting in his own way all the time. And I'm like, at what point is she showing any signs of, A, being duplicitous or not saying what she thinks? Because yeah. she's telling you, I want to be with you. She's telling you, you're the one for me. She's telling you all these things. And he's still, like, breaks up with her and he's like, I'm not good enough for her. She's not going to like me because of my dad and all this other stuff. And I'm like... You need to just get out of your own way. Just like, get right like, out of bruh, your own way. Bruh. Yo, bruh. <laughs> I'm going to need you to get it I'm together. Gonna need, I'm going to need you to lock it up. <laughs> lock it the fuck up. Yeah. Because that, for me, was the one thing about this where I was like, oh, okay, I know you're going to get over it eventually, but, like, let's just get over it already. Yeah. I I, uh, I completely agree. It was, it was the one thing that annoyed me and annoyed me in every book mm-hmm. because it sometimes makes me feel like the – author could not think of a plausible mm. um thing like a plausible reason they would break up uh, yeah a plausible reason they would break up mm-hmm. and so it's almost like inventing something out of nowhere and so i think at the root of why it annoys me is because it challenges my intelligence mm. um as i'm reading i'm like like you're reaching you're, you're reaching. reaching totally you know and so that for me like right. annoys me yeah i agree and i and then the one other thing that i wanted to get your take on was so Obviously, he comes groveling back, der. And mm-hmm. she has, you know, this great moment where she realizes, I don't need to change for him. Like, I'm I'm fine just the way I am, and someone's going to love me just the way I am, which I always feel like is a nice empowerment moment for any character to realize, like, you don't have to be someone else. Who you are is good enough. But then in the epilogue, so he's now started his fashion empire with his cousin. Mm-hmm which I'm fine with. They're growing faster than they thought they would based on her projections and stuff. And I'm like, I'm down for that. She's all about data and science. And she does e-commerce yeah. analytics for her life. So, like, she could hook a brother up. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm down for that. And also, she she's talked multiple times about how beautiful his clothes are. And multiple people throughout the book asked her who made her dress, who made his suit. So, like, clearly there's some validity there, mm-hmm. aside from that she just likes him. Um, so that I was like, okay, it makes sense to me that they could be opening their own shop and blah, blah, blah. But then she's like, I decided to take the promotion and have five people under me and more client interaction. And I was like, really? (laughs) Like, what is it? Some sort of dick love magic is happening here? (laughs) Because like, I get that the author wanted to show that her character was being open to more growth opportunities, but that still felt like unrealistic based on the fact that she loves working with the data and doesn't like to interact with other people just because she's in love with someone doesn't mean she would want to interact with other people yeah and five reports that's a lot of interaction (laughs) so that was the one thing for me that i was like it felt a little and i did read a couple reviews where people were like did he heal her autism like i don't know that, that felt a little weird for me that she didn't say like I didn't take the promotion, Andrea but I did agree to take on like one friend. intern or or one team member or yeah. something where it was like a small five people and in interacting with clients is not a small step. That is a monster. Yeah, I have, I have two interns now, and I'm like, dear God, what the? Fuck? Yeah, like, <laughs> seriously, I'm like, it's it, that that to me was like a little. I'm like, this is a lady who can't get through her morning without doing her exact routine at work. But now she's going to have people barging into her office all the time, asking her questions and needing her needing her to make decisions. And, and yeah. I don't know that that felt false to me. But I, I actually like I just thought, why do they put this here? Like, why do we even care? Why do we even we care? were happy? They were happy together. We don't need yeah. to know the rest. Like I was done. 
Yeah. Like, I didn't even care about his fashion line uh-huh. or whatever. I didn't need that epilogue whatsoever. No, I assumed it was going to um, be successful. Yeah. It's like, they launched a fashion line. Yeah. Like, my brain, can, my imagination can actually yeah. do better with that than you telling me it was successful. Yeah. Um, so I didn't, I didn't think the epilogue was even necessary. necessary at all. That's a good point. Yeah. Interesting. It felt like, I don't, I don't like neat little bows. Mm. And everybody always tries to get the, you know, happily ever after. The last word. And the, yeah, the last little, you know, whatever. And I'm like, just let it. But I already be. know that they're going to be happily ever yeah. after. I already knew that. You told me that. You don't. <laughs> like, I'm already on board. You know, the cover told me that this was going to happen. Yeah, right. Like the genre told me this was happily right? ever after. You know. So <laughs> yeah. So I, I just felt like it was unnecessary. Okay. Should have been edited out. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's talk a little bit about our beautiful heroine Stella. And I mean, beautiful on the inside and the outside, not just like she's pretty. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me about her. What'd you think? Um, I mean, I I loved Stella. I loved her from the minute. I love the direct uh, talking. I love the analytical nature of her character because, like I said, that is how my brain works as well. So it she made a lot of sense to me, and she also seemed very real. Like this exists. This mm-hmm. character exists mm-hmm. in real life, and because it's, this is not a fantasy genre or whatever, like. Like I said, this is like the realest book I ever read. Like they were both super humanly flawed um, and whatever. And I loved it. Um, so Stella for me, I gave her five because I just freaking enjoyed the shit out of her. I enjoyed the straight talking um, and I enjoyed her. And I enjoyed the commentary and banter between the two of them so much, mm-hmm. like especially during their like sex scenes and stuff like that. Yeah, and the scene where they're having ice cream, and he's like, I'm going to get a different flavor. And she's like, why would you do that? So I, like, I already know which flavor I like, yeah. obviously. And he's like, yeah, but then we could try it together. And he's just like, she's like, okay. Okay. I mean, I guess I'll try it. And then when he, like, kisses her with the ice cream, the way she described that, like, the kiss with the cold and the mint, I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, so I was – Reading a lot of, uh, did you read the afterword or or did they have one on the audio book? No, they didn't have one. So the it turns out that in in researching this book, the author ended up realizing as she was reading stories about people with As- women and girls with Aspergers that she had a lot of the same traits, and she ended up actually getting diagnosed. Really? Uh huh. And so they call this a like an own voices book uh-huh. because she's an author with autism who's writing about a character with autism, Um, which is very cool because I'm sure she was pulling from a lot of her own interactions over time and, and her own thought processes of how she would respond to different things. Um, I also thought it was really interesting in the afterword that she was talking about how girls are less likely to be diagnosed with autism than boys because boys fixate on the classic sort of signs of autism or Asperger's, which is like numbers. And um, whereas girls tend to fixate more on like ponies or, or ponies was the example she used, but like yeah. on something else. Yeah. And so it gets taken as like, Oh, it's just like, she's a little, you know, eccentric, but like they don't recognize necessarily that, they have autism, which yeah. I thought was interesting. Well, the thing, like, th- that's so interesting to me, and it's kind of, like, why I didn't mention it earlier is because I didn't want to be, like, for myself, be super flippant about autism, right? Yeah. But for my, for the last, I don't know, like, eight years, I've thought, I feel like I'm on the spectrum. Like, <laughs> I've, I've always felt that way because things just don't make sense to me. People do things, and, like, some of the stuff she says in the book, like, like the ice cream, like, why would you do that? This is this. Like, I've said that so many times where somebody, I don't realize someone's trying to be nice or extra or romantic or whatever. And my poor partner, sometimes he's like trying to be super sweet about something. And I'm like, that's stupid. We, that doesn't make any sense. Why would we do that? You know? And he's like, well, I was trying to be, and, I'm like, and then it, when it clicks, you feel so bad right. because you just know that it just didn't input mm-hmm. like correctly or it yeah. didn't input the way you, you know, they meant it mm-hmm. uh, or whatnot. And so I've always thought like, I, I gotta be on the spectrum somewhere because like everybody else seems to know these social norms yeah. that I just don't yeah that don't make sense yeah. whatsoever. Sure. Um, so it's interesting that that she actually found that out just by being like, oh, yeah, she was doing research and was like, I used to do that. Oh, that that's what I do. That's how I cope with whatever. Yeah. Um, and then she realized and went and got tested. Um, so that I thought was just like I thought that was just like a, first of all just a fascinating thing to think like oh I'm writing a book about something and then it makes me discover a huge you know 
a huge thing about myself. Yeah. Um, not that it like changes who she is as a person, but it probably gives her, I would imagine, and, and she kind of wrote about it, that it, it gives her a little bit of um, sort of clarity about the way she processes the world. And then she went into therapy to like get some tools that could help her process the world, which I thought was great. Everyone needs tools to process the world the way that they do. <laughs> I think everybody does. But the thing about Asperger's too, like it's interesting is that if you are not like depending on where you are on the spectrum, it's may not be readily apparent. Mm -hmm. And that was what, you know, uh, Stella was going through is that yeah. it wasn't readily apparent. So people just think she's an ass. Yeah. Like when he goes when she goes to see uh, his mom. Yeah. And and she's like, uh, no, you can't make that in plastic. Yeah. It's poison. And she's coming from her heart going like, no, yeah. you cannot yeah, eat I poison. I don't want you to get sick. Right. Can't eat. And, she, and the mom's like, why won't you yeah. eat my she's food? She's like, did you file a missing report you know. about your husband? Like, where could he be? Where could he be? Oh, man. That oh. was the most awkward. And like, I felt that moment. I felt it so hard. You know? And they and I think the author did such an amazing job of being like, the piano, the, the plastic, yes. the husband, the piano. The kids plastic, the husband, fighting. The kids like, fighting. And where's the husband? And why does she keep playing that key? Mm -hmm. Like, that off that off key on mm -hmm. the piano. Did you really um, tune your piano? Like, like I got anxious in that mm -hmm. in that scene reading that and i mm -hmm. thought that was amazing how she how she painted that yeah. whole you know picture yeah. or whatever and then it makes a lot of sense like when stella realizes like ah she's like ah shit i fucked up mm -hmm. she's like someone's crying i did something wrong and i don't know what it is mm -hmm. and that to me is like that part where you're like you know like so empathetic so towards her I, as a character i remember being I think I was like seven years old mm -hmm. and my mom's um, friend walked in with her like boyfriend or whoever he was. And um, all of my siblings, we were all standing at the front door hap like by happenstance when they walked in um, and everybody was just looking at them. And I was like, I was like, why do you have red stuff all over your mouth? Well, what I didn't understand as a kid, I just was like, it doesn't make, why did you do that to your face? Mm -hmm. That was my logic. Um, I didn't realize they were making out. Sure. Okay. So uh, everybody was just trying not to say that, like sure. to just pretend like it wasn't happening. And I was like, something's wrong here. Yeah. There's something on your face. There's something you on your face know. and you should address it yeah. immediately. And you have it too, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I remember my mom just like snatching me up being like, <laughs> shut up. Shut up. <laughs> you know? shut up. <laughs> like, and you're like, what? And you're like, that's exactly what happened. I'm like, what? That like he has are, red stuff all over his face. Are we not? Are we not? Like you know. <laughs> so I always tell people like, are we not talking about this? Just let me know. Like you just gotta let me know what we're not talking about, and mm -hmm. then I can be on board. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I definitely, I definitely felt her. The author did a great job of of making me as the reader feel her shame and feel her sadness that she didn't connect with people and that like she had hurt someone's feelings and not really understanding how to like rectify it. But still she went over to try and like say, I'm sorry. And, um, and also I was like, I feel like that yeah, was that his sweet. fault too, was also my take. I was like, bro, this is your fault because if you have a sensitive issue and you bring someone to meet your family, you need to let them know ahead of time. P.S. These are the four topics we do not bring up. We do not bring up my dad. <laughs> we do not bring up, you yeah. know, cooking in Tupperware yeah. or whatever. You know, like, you got to bring up... I mean, and I get that he, like, that someone who wasn't on the spectrum probably would have read the situation a little bit better, but probably still would have asked about the dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like They might I, not have I drilled at home. Yeah, but, I might not yeah. have, like, asked 25 times, but I probably would have asked anyways. Yeah. Or said something like, oh, where's your husband now? Like, why doesn't he tune it? Like, and then I would have been like, ooh, and tried to change the topic. But yeah. I feel like when you introduce someone to your family, you need to apprise them of what landscape they're walking into. Okay. So, yes, to this very specific thing, right? So, God, it's, literally this book makes me feel <laughs> more Asperger's every day. So, a friend of mine at YouTube takes in foster kids, right? However, she didn't tell me this. So, every time I would see her, she would have a new sibling. She would go, this is my sister. This is my sister. This is my sister. Or her mom takes in foster okay. kids or whatever. Sorry. Um, this is my sister. And after a while, it was like she had like 12 sisters. Yeah. Right. And so the sister's there there one day. And I was like, she's like, this is my sister. And I was like, oh, OK. Like, how old are you? You know, she says how old she is. And it's like and I start asking questions and like I see them kind of look at each other. But my brain doesn't register that this is like a look of like. like Why is she asking? Yeah. Us? Like whatever. And then uh, my friend is trying to like 
just kind of shut it down, which I, this is all I'm telling you the after the fact where I'm like, oh, that was her trying to shut it down or whatever. But the whole time I'm just like, what, but how? But what is this? Whatever. And then she literally puts her hand on my shoulder and this like kind of leans in and she's like, she's my foster sister. She's the, and then I was like, oh, okay. And then like afterwards, the assessment of the situation right. lets me know like, oh, Mm, like that was the cue I missed. That was the cue I missed. You know what I mean? Um, and like, so sometimes I'm like, what you're saying, which is like, just let some let let people know. But I think that again, if you if you may be on the spectrum, or you just you just there's certain things you just don't can't quite pick up. Nobody would even know to really be like, yo, maybe give you a heads up. Right. But when he comes back, when she comes back for dinner the next mm-hmm. time, he like preemptively. Like, he's like, they're not twins uh, to, to his sister. He's like, these right. are your sisters. They're not twins or whatever. And he keeps get, giving her information. Right. Then that was sexy to me. I was he's like, like, cueing her. He's cueing her to let her know what everything right. is. And by then he knows also. Like, Does he, he know has, at that point? He, yeah, because he recognizes it after the dinner. Because go, he goes and works out. To see Kai, his. Right. His, uh, Quan? Quan? No, the Kai. Oh. I thought it was Q-U-A-N. Kai is the he see, is the one who is, is, the, is autistic. Who's autistic. Yeah, right. he, he goes to see Kwan, Kwan is the one who, yeah. but Kai is there practicing right. or whatever. And then he finally like clicks in his head. Not finally. I mean, it, it why it shouldn't have clicked ahead of time, but it does at that point click yeah. in his head. And he's like, "Wait a minute! When you said she might be like him, did you mean that she is um, like him?" <laughs> and then and then after that, he's like. It also made me feel good that he recognized that and then, like you said, started prompting her with information and making sure she knew ahead of time, like, what's going to happen next. These are the things that are, you know, going on. I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to do, you know, like, even things as simple as that. And I also liked that he had experience with someone with autism um, because if he hadn't and then he had acted that way, I would have been like, we couldn't have added five sentences about him, like, Googling some books and reading some books because... I feel like even though I'm, you know, a well-educated person, I've never had someone in my immediate, like, circle who is autistic, at least that I've known about. And so I wouldn't just, like, off the bat know what they would need from me. Yeah. So it made sense to me that he had a, a cousin who he'd, like, grown up with. And so he understands, like, overstimulation. He understands the cues. He understands... Yeah. Um, which which I liked that they had that that character that was really close to him built into the story. You know the um the everything he does for her as somebody who has um Asperger's to help her along is like everything I do for a 5-year-old that I'm like babysitting. Mm-hmm. Like we're going to the store. These are the things that are going to happen at the store when we get there. Da, 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 da. And I'm not trying to say she's mm-hmm. like a 5-year-old. I but I specifically do this with kids because totally. I think it's respectful. I think it's respectful it's, to let well, it's them. it's very helpful for their development so yeah. that they can understand and they're not surprised by the day. They don't get over, overwhelmed by what happens. Exactly. I do that with my daughter. I say, now we're going to put on our shoes and then we're going to go in grandma's car and we're going to go to school and you're going to see your teachers and your friends. Mama's going to pick you up. Like, I, I, like, I'll narrate the whole goddamn experience of her. I mean, I do narrate her whole life. <laughs> her whole life. Um, it's super helpful. Yeah. It's, super helpful. It, well, it's helpful, but you... you I you stop doing that with adults. Though. You stop doing that with adults. You and just assume they can roll with kind of like whatever's going to happen. You know, and then and not every adult can. Like I'm very much like, what? Why are we going to do this thing? Mm-hmm. Okay, like, okay, cool. We can still do it. I just, but why are we doing? Okay, great. I think it's helpful you know? to set. So like, my husband's not on the spectrum, but I do like to set expectations so that we both feel like we've come out of our day a winner. <laughs> Especially if we're going somewhere where there is an expectation of like. Um, like if I'm going to a work event with him, I ask him ahead of time. I'm like, okay, who is it important that I talk to? Whose wife do you want me to impress? Like who, what, what, what type of experience do you want? Do you want me to just honestly, cause like sometimes just cause he has to actually talk about business. It's basically just like, follow me around and say hello to everyone and be nice. And sometimes it's like, oh no, this is a social party. So that you can, you know, I'm a social butterfly and I talk to anyone. So yeah. you can flit around and meet people and, you know, but I want you to come with me to meet these specific people. Like I want, yeah. I don't want you to like leave and be about, like I want you to be close so that I can introduce you to these specific people because it's important to me that you meet them and they meet you and blah, blah, blah. So it's like, it's always good to know ahead of time or if he's coming with me somewhere, I'm like, this is what I expect out of our interactions, what I'd like you to do. Yeah. And 
the things, you know, like don't bring this up if there's, I mean, usually it's not a hot button issue, but like don't bring this up or something. Um, but I think it's so much nicer because then we both are like, okay, cool. No yeah. problem. I can do that. I can handle that ahead of time. But I think it's like terrible when you, when you don't have any of that information ahead of time. And so you're just like, oh, well, this seems like a social party. I'm going to go off. Oh, I see the other two people that I know from your company. I'm going to go grab a quick drink with them at the bar. And then he's like, trying to introduce you to the president of some company. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, oh, no, that was me being a bad wife, but not on purpose, not just on, purpose. on, like, yeah. I didn't know. So I do think it's interesting that we don't actively do that all the time. Well, Like, like I do that, but more because I'm, like, kind of a control freak about what's going to happen. And I like people to, like... You're more organized. And I'm organized, yeah. and so I like to, like, lay out the day a little bit in the morning, like, hey, it's Saturday, some days Saturdays, it's like, hey, it's Saturday. We have nothing to do today. Where, <laughs> when should we eat? You know. Yeah. And some Saturdays, it's like, hey, like, okay, people are coming at ten, so we got to go to the grocery store at nine because we need to get these three things because we don't have them in our house and we're feeding people and and then they're gonna come over and then they're gonna leave and then we're like, gonna whatever. Could you, could you imagine though, like, like this is just a total realization I had on my own. I don't know. It's probably in some sort of book or something. But like as a kid, you just get dragged. Mm-hmm. Right, so you're just there playing with your toys. All of a sudden, we're going to the store right now. Immediately, mm-hmm. there's no transition between what's happening to this thing. If you imagine as an adult, if somebody literally just dragged you along their day and you had no idea what was going on at any point, you would like at some point just actually this happened to me once before. Where's I literally just stopped yeah. and I was like, I am not going not one more place <laughs> until you tell me where <laughs> what we're doing, where we're going, yeah. and why we're doing this bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that was I remember having that realization with kids one day and was like, oh no, I'm gonna let them know exactly what's happening throughout the day. Yeah. So they don't feel like they're just being dragged around yeah. like a non a non person. Totally. You know, like an accessory yep. or whatever. I think about that frequently. Um I actually saw a funny meme and it was like, what if you fell asleep in your crib and you like woke up in Target? <laughs> <laughs> Because when you're a baby, especially like an infant baby, you literally almost never wake up in the same place you (laughs) fell asleep. You might be just one bedroom over. You might be, oh, I fell asleep in mom's arms, but now I'm in my crib or whatever. But you're never, you're almost never where you were. (laughs) Like how disorienting that would be. Or like right now, someone just came and scooped you up and carried you into the kitchen. How fucking weird. You'd be like, yo, I was playing I was, over there. I was, I was doing stuff. I was doing stuff. I was working. <laughs> yeah. I, was working. I was doing my work. You know? It's also uh, why I say, like, um, um, babies are, are like, like have paraplegia, really. They're really just people with paraplegia. Like, that's why they're always getting you to, ca- like, carry them. And then they point. They're like, my legs don't work. Take me to the kitchen. Grapes? Do you see those grapes on the counter? I'm going to need you to get those for me. <laughs> like, if, yeah. if they could walk at that point, do you mar- do you? It's probably really great that they cannot walk oh, when yeah. they come out because there's the be impulse horrible. control is be there's horrible. no impulse control. Could you imagine having like a baby who could actually walk from day one? Some people's babies like, walk at like eight or nine months, and I'm like, that sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> Kira walked at thirteen, and I was like, take your sweet time. Take your. Now she's like running fast and trying to escape, but like, I was like, you don't need to be. You could crawl there. You could, you could crawl there scooch. real slow. Booty scooch. scooch. Scoot yourself Booty over there. <laughs> Take 20 minutes while I watch you do it and I'm doing other things. Yeah, I can't imagine. It would be horrible. Yeah. Well, it's like like when a like horse comes out and it stands up right away. I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> but it's like, but they're so much further along in their development. When they're, babies come out, they're so helpless. Yeah. Just little blobs of flesh. <laughs> blobs of flesh. I don't know. I'm going to cuddle the shit at your new baby though. Yeah. Um, I also gave Stella a five. Because of all the things that we have said. Yeah. She was wonderful. Very well written. What did you think about our dreamy as fuck boy? Um, I gave him, I called him a McDreamy sweetie. Um, he wasn't steamy to me. Mm-hmm. You got to hit my kink factor for you to hit the steamy. Okay. Um, but I thought it was really romantic the way he took her step by step by step by step. Even when she put so many roadblocks in in his way, he was like, oh, no kissing? Okay, sure. You know, like, yeah. and, and how he stayed within her comfort zone to like, I mean, he like pushed her comfort zone, but he didn't like giantly cross it and be like forcing her to like, like you're going to love this now right. type of thing. Um, so I gave him, I thought it was sweet. And so I gave him a McDreamy. How many stars did you give him? Oh, I gave him four stars because I didn't like his little bitch fest in his mind. That was mine, too. I gave him four stars because I was like, I'm taking off a whole star because of 
this nonsense about your dad and she's not going to trust you. Yeah. And then she makes too much money to be with you and she's too successful to be with you. Yeah. And I was like, just get over it already. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, he was totally dreamy. She did a great job of describing him as looking like a <laughs> Korean drama star and that he was beautiful and built and like yeah. did all these martial arts. So he's chiseled and has eight in an eight pack. And, um, and obviously he's like, she bomb, had man bomb, martial arts bomb.com in bed. <laughs> um, I said that he was the whole package. McSteamy yeah. in the sheets and McDreamy in the streets. <laughs> That's uh, I like that. Because <laughs> I thought, I mean, he was pretty steamy. Like he was given, he was given, given it to her. It was not kinky. Yeah. But it was, it was steamy as far as vanilla steam goes. Yeah. Um, so I was into it. I was into it. And that brings us to a skimmer's guide to a the skin. cookies and the nookie. The skimmer's guide. The nookie. Cool. So in Audible... Or uh, in, um, well, I w- I'll say Audible because I don't know how it works on other platforms. But I listen on Audible. So in chapter, the end of chapter 19 is when they get steamy, like for real, like penetration. Oh, okay. I was boop, like, except boop, for that, like, boop, boop. so they, that's true. That's true. Penetration was 19. Yeah. But, but there was so much chapter more. Chapter three is the first time that they start making out and doing the foreplay. Yeah. And then it was like chapter three and then it was like chapter eight and then chapter nine and yeah. then chapter 12 and then chapter 13 and then yeah. chapter, like it was like, like, I wouldn't recommend skipping. No, I would recommend just, just start from the beginning mm-hmm. and there, there is no skimmer's guide. They give this, you something from the, from the like jump. Like almost every chapter, or every other chapter, there is some sort of sexual encounter between the two of them. Yeah. Um, which I feel like is the appropriate amount. Mm-hmm. Not always, but for this book, for sure. <laughs> Sometimes it's like a little weird when all of a sudden it's chapter three and you're like, y'all are already fucking. But in this case, I think because obviously she hired him to teach her how yeah. to do the fucking. It made complete yeah. sense that they were already starting to get a little petty, a little yeah. sweaty, a little think, making out. Like the wind had it. Like they had sex in like a day. Yeah. 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 Which, again, I've done, but <laughs> not always appropriate for the story. It depends <laughs> on the story. Um, okay, so my favorite line in the book um, DM. was, you have to talk to me, okay? If something hurts, if you don't like it, if you want something more, if it's perfect, say everything. I still shut. She said, I'll try. Unexpectedly, he flipped her around so she was on her hands and knees. I think you feel less con- self-conscious this way. And I was like, mm, 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 mm. Get it, boy, get it, get, get it. Because it, it. <laughs> I thought that was like, for me, that like little combination was like the perfect amount of just showcasing that he is very in tune with like yeah. that she does not experience sex in the same way that his previous partners have and that he wants her to be open, he wants her to be honest, he wants to make sure she's liking it and she's having fun. And then also that he's like gonna take charge. Yeah. Plus I mean and I was into it. Doggy style Doggy yes. style's the one position where I always feel everything. Yes. So Life that's things. I'm always like trying to turn over doggy style. Yeah. Then why are you turning over yeah. that? No, I'm going. Yeah. This is what's happening. This now. is where I want to be. This is where I want to be right now. Be over here. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. And um, yeah. And I just think it was very cute. And she's like, "Will you like this?" And I'm like, "Oh, you sweet angel." <laughs> yes, he will. She about to get yes, it. Yes, he will. <laughs> he about to get it, and you gonna take. Mm. It's gonna be good for you. It's gonna be good for him. It's gonna be good for everybody. Everybody wants it. Get 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 it. In case you wanted to know if Google was spying on our podcast, Google is Google was. They're spying, and they want to give you, a and hug. they want to give me a hug. <laughs> oh, geez, that that was interesting. Um, great. Do you want to? Do you have another uh, favorite? I line? only had one this time. What? I mean, I had a lot, and but I just decided I'm going to stick with one. I did have like, I had a few contenders. But. Got you. Okay, so my favorite line of the book. Um, it goes like this. Uh, Stella collapsed onto Michael's bed. After her first three sexual encounters, she'd been convinced intercourse wasn't for her. It had been messy at times, painful and extremely uncomfortable. Right now, it was all she could think about. <laughs> so that was when she when she was with Michael. Mm-hmm. She was like, he went to go get the condoms. He had mm-hmm. forgotten them. Yeah. And she's like, she was, she's like, oh, I'm actually looking forward to this. Yeah. <laughs> 
She's like, yes. Yeah, we about to get it. Yeah. And then she went snooping through his house. Uh, like, I totally would have, though. I mean, there's no way. So the thing about it is, I would totally want to, like, snoop. Sure. Um, I generally don't search people's phones and stuff, but I would want to look, ar- look around and stuff. I look around. Yeah. Or whatever. She was, like, in his mail. She was in his stuff or whatever. <laughs> but the thing is, if I'm in, like, sexy mode, I can't go snooping because I... Cause oh, then I'll lose my sexy, gotcha, gotcha. I'll lose my sexy mode. I'll have to start all over again. Mm. So, so that was my only thing. When she, no, starts, I can go back and forth. I can't go back and I forth. Can go back and forth. Like, plus I would have been like, oh, he went to his car. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have gone through his phone. I never go through people's phones because no. I don't care. But I, I do like to like just see the way that they live. They live, yes. You know, like I want to see like I want to see the bathroom. I want to see, see the toilet. See the kitchen. Like, I want to see your closet. Yeah. I want to see your living room. Like I just want to see, you know, kind of like see a little snippet of your life. Yeah. And and all the things that I make up about your life based <laughs> on what I see. <laughs> I mean, pretty much. Uh, uh, so that was my that was my favorite uh, quote. <laughs> Um, so my favorite review was from Goodreads, um, and it was from Chan, and Chan gave it five stars. Mm. Um, and I liked her review. First of all, there were some extremely long reviews and I was like, I can't read one of these on here. It'll be 25 minutes of just reviewing this. Yeah. Um, but I liked hers. There were, there were actually a lot of people who didn't like this book, um, which I found interesting cause I really liked this book and I was like, I don't feel like there's that much not to like, but there were definitely people on Goodreads who did not enjoy this book. But this lady said, well, I promised myself I wasn't going to five star this, but then the author's note at the end made me cry like a little bitch. <laughs> this book is excellent. Like the blurb says, it's about a woman with autism who hires a male escort to help her with her own perceived social ineptitude. But honestly, it's just a perfectly romantic story about two people who just really get and accept everything about each other. What I did like, almost everything, but here's an actual list. Stella has a typically masculine job, and Michael has a traditionally female one. We love gendered job reversals. Yeah. Also, Swedish, Vietnamese, male leads. Stella is a real person and not just a diagnosis. Um, who wasn't like, woe is me about her diagnosis at all. Um, everything was on Stella's terms. Never pushed to have sex when she was uncomfortable. Um, that being said, there was a lot of hot sex. And that, in my opinion, was not overdone. So many great moments where I genuinely clutched my chest at the heart of the romance. What I didn't like, Michael's hangups. You're a grown adult man. Get a grip a little bit? Double, <laughs> double question mark. And I was like... Yes, exactly. Douchey pervs that don't have to meet their maker. Didn't get what comes to them. Um, Wish there were more snippets of daily life to make the relationship a little more fleshed out. Uh, That's literally it. I'm not Satan in a sundress today, folks. This book rocked. (laughs) (laughs) I just liked it. Uh, I was like, yeah, I agree. That's good. Yeah. Um, I, uh, for, so for that review, they actually comment on, on something that like, I think about like just I muse about in general, mm-hmm. um, and I'm not mad at him being like um, uh, Vietnamese Swedish mixed right. um, or whatever. Uh, the the thing that makes me go like hmm is that everything like that I've um, read or seen so far is mm-hmm. always with the Asian man that has an Asian man. Is he's always mixed mm-hmm. um, or whatnot? Interesting. And so it's uh, again not mad at mixing, <laughs> um, but I would love to see. One where he, where he's not mixed, like I I don't think they the characters necessarily need to be mixed to be attractive or to right. be sexy or to mm-hmm. be whatever. And I don't know if that's why it's done or not. But um, but I was like, he could have just been Vietnamese. <laughs> like he could have just been solid. On, I all bet. The way. I honestly bet yeah. you it's because the lady who wrote this book probably likes that actor from from the Korean crazy drama ra- from, or from a. Uh, She's from the Korean dramas. The one she mentions in the book that this guy looks like. Oh, so she gotcha. just made him half and half because I think that guy is half That and guy half. is. Like the guy from Crazy Rich Asians who plays the, yeah, yeah, the, lead, the tall lead. He's also mixed. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, so for me, I just, I and because I'm sensitive probably to this, obviously, yeah. I'm just like. Shawnee's mixed in case everyone didn't know that. He's <laughs> listening. She just goes, obviously. <laughs> Shani I is, am mixed. Shawnee is mixed. <laughs> but you some, cannot see her from you can't, you can't through your device. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, it used to be like being mixed was more beautiful. Like, so oh, if you're, yeah, yeah. Any, anything mixed with white became more beautiful. Sure. And so I just hope that that's not like a, a running trend that's going on oh, or whatever. Because like, you know. I don't know that I've read that many books with a, an it's Asian It's a book. Well, you forget. I've also been watching a lot of Asian okay. um 
TV. <laughs> oh, they definitely. <laughs> and they're always the ones who are the leads are always mixed. Yeah. Um, or whatever. Sure. And I'm not going to say they're not fine. They yeah, are they're fine. fine. You know what I mean? But also the ones who are not mixed are also fine. Right. right. <laughs> you know. So I just thought it was interesting that that uh, she had put that in there. So my review from Audible is uh, by uh, someone named Becker Sleep. Uh, from South Carolina. Mm. It's titled, I'd Buy These Two Undies. That's what I thought. I thought she only bought them two, like, two undies. <laughs> um, this book was a fun romance to romp through. I went in expecting it to be similar to The Rosie Project, which I, I Shawnee, don't know what that is. That it is not. It's got some pretty vivid, explicit sex scenes. Those don't bother me, but can be a shocker if you aren't expecting them to pop up. I also felt like this book portrayed both insta-love and slow burn at the same time. Not being a fan of insta-love at all, I greatly enjoyed the way that also made this a slow burn romance. It's definitely a quick one to get through and lots of fun getting there. Expect several chuckles along the way. So I picked this one because it was a a moderate review and on Audible there are just not that many reviews. Um, But I agreed, I I liked that it was kind of an insta-love and a slow burn, which... Like, you usually don't get those two things together. So I thought she was um, spot on, on the, in the review. And I thought this book was hilarious to me. There was so many moments that I laughed out loud. And when you're listening to an audiobook laughing out loud, you know, and your partner's next to you and they keep turning to you, you know that it's a good book. Mm-hmm. You, just, you just know it's a good book. Yeah. Leo always, like, knows because I have, like, a little smile on my face if I like the book. And yeah. he's like, are you reading one of your smutty books? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I am. And I just got to a smutty part. <laughs> You're like, I'm closing my eyes now. Don't talk to me for the next 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, and he always comes over and I'm like, yeah, get ready for some nookie. <laughs> Because I'm transferring yes. all this energy to someone, and it's going to be you. And see, that's why. You're welcome. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Loki, though, when we started producing, like, romance novel audiobooks, yeah. there was nothing better for our sex life. No. Like, it, we would, like, produce them. I would, like, read them, read the sex scenes, and then we would bang. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. How could you avoid that? That would be, like, insane. Sometimes I'd be like, I got to get through this. Really. I gotta Sometimes get through I this. tell you all, like, I'll, like, I don't dog ear like you, you savage, but I'll, <laughs> I'll leave a section open and I'll be like, just read this chapter, honey. <laughs> and he's like, why? And I'm like, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's an exploration of some things that maybe we should explore. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm glad I'm not the only one who does it. I'm yeah. like, read chapter 13 for yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Like, just read it out loud. I don't want to just, I don't want to describe it because it yeah. takes like the fun away. No, I, you got to read it. You, you read it read and it. then we'll, 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 then we'll reconvene. Talk about it. We'll reconvene afterwards. <laughs> all right well everyone i hope that you read this book or if you've already read this book let us know in the comments and reviews what you thought absolutely Uh, we thought this book rocked yes uh love stella uh head over to our website if you want to see some book recommendations or if you want to buy the book you can click on our link we make a very tiny commission from amazon uh and it doesn't cost you a thing it doesn't cost you a thing and then we make a little money so that's nice um and check it out we got some other similar recommendations of books uh that if you like this one you'll probably like those and don't forget to subscribe on apple music and on spotify and follow us and all that stuff and send us all your messages because we do read them and we love them yes. especially on instagram yes for sure let us know talk to us and if you have books that you either have read or are dying to read let us know so that we can put them on our list um because while we do have access to you know all of the goodreads recommendations and other people's book lists and other book bloggers that we follow it's always fun to hear what the community is wanting us to read next uh, so thanks for listening and we were happy to have you and happy to talk to you and get nasty with you. So yes. until next time, may your books be your lover. And your hand your best friend. Thanks for hanging in with us, romance readers. Head over to Instagram to continue chatting with us. We're super friendly. We want to cackle with you. We want to know what your favorite sex scene was. And we need more book recommendations. If you want to read along with us, go to our website, romanceataglance.com, to see what we're reading next. And we'll see you next podcast.